to all the respected delegates and the organizers for this opportunity to be a part of the summer pericon. It's a great privilege to be here to hear the talk on headaches in children by Dr. Geeta S. Madam uh, is a versatile teacher and we all know headaches in children are often a headache for all pediatricians. And this is one uh, complaint that we often overlook because usually children are unable to express what they have and even if they have, we tend to overlook the symptom of headache. To uh, explain more on this and how to tackle this very common complaint in our clinics, we have with us Gita S. Madam. Madam is a professor at Goni Medical College, uh, an ardent teacher and a researcher. Over to you, Madam. Uh, this, uh, when compared with a complaint like a cough, wheezing and all, headache is not that much a common complaint. But if you get a headache, and that will be actually sometimes a headache for the treating people also. Especially if you sit in a uh, rural area or in a very, uh, like an OPD, in a PHC and all. So if you sit in a bigger hospital, probably that's not an issue because, you know, there's always a possibility of getting the child admitted for observation or even doing an investigation. So uh, we will be going into uh, from a pediatrician's perspective and uh, what to do. Uh, this headache uh, we all know, uh, I don't think that uh, most of the people who are sitting running in an OP in a PHC, now I am in Pony, it's uh, just like a PHC or a CHC setting only, we don't see headache uh, routinely. Uh, so one headache which uh, I am reminded is of a girl who came to me around uh, 10 years and she was saying she had headache for the past three months she was not going to the school and the mother was always telling she says headache all this and mother is not uh, happy with that headache but on a, taking a history we know that the mother has got a small infant uh, with her she's uh, looking after the home alone husband is not here and then uh, she expects this, uh, this bigger child to behave responsibility but this child is really suffering so that is uh, uh, one example so I'll be dealing basically with the pediatrician's perspective and uh, classification, but the red flag signs that are very important and uh, uh, common primary headaches in children. I will not be dealing much about the secondary headaches and what to do and how to manage. Uh, headaches, we all know it can be a sporadic. We also have had headaches uh, in our lifetime. It can be a problem and it becomes severe and also sometimes it becomes a recurrent. And sometimes on a daily basis, a uh, headache will be there and it becomes chronic. And pain, we all know it's a subjective and it's uh, related on the previous experiences of children and also on the adults. Uh, small children who cannot verbalize uh, may be having some other features like excess cry, irritability, head banging. Especially uh, children who are differently abled, they will be having uh, other features like uh, banging the head on the, uh, the cord and etc. The prevalence, uh, we feel that you know headache is not a complaint but uh, as the child moves uh, from a childhood to an adult, the prevalence of headache and also the recurrent headache is very uh, little more common. That means uh, see if it is 50% age, it becomes a real high proportion. And some children, uh, have, especially the school age and also adolescents, uh, they may be having a poor uh, quality of life. They will not be uh, interacting with their peers, play, leisure time activities, etc. And some headaches like migraines can extend into the adulthood. Classification, basically it is classified as primary and secondary. Primary headaches are headaches where there is no other pathology. Whereas secondary headaches usually have an underlying pathology in the brain. So, uh, pediatricians, especially uh, who treat uh, children in tertiary care hospitals and all, mostly we deal with secondary headaches, especially in medical college settings. It may be like meningitis, head and neck trauma or a vascular cause like strokes, substance abuse, and craniofacial structures, pain, cranial neuralgia, striginal neuralgia, etc. Whereas uh, this talk will basically will be dealing with a primary headache uh, that is somewhat may be hidden in the community. So they are basically migraine or uh, can be cluster headaches, tension headaches and some other few which are not very common. So this approach uh, is very important for a pediatrician. It can be uh, acute headaches which come and uh, chronic headaches. It usually not much of a time frame but uh, it's usually set more than 4 months. And acute headaches can be localized or generalized and uh, it can be recurrent. 
so a uh, few causes of localized this is one which we commonly see in our opd on a daily basis like dental pain caries abscess sinusitis uh, tm joint pains etc whereas generalized uh, headaches uh, like uh, fever uh, viral fevers we know uh, viral fevers uh, ordinary viral fevers influenza dengue uh, then leptospira all these things and systemic infections meningitis meningitis is uh, one thing which uh, pediatricians are all familiar because the moment we have all started our training any headache you know we are trained to look into meningitis but uh, only in a tertiary care center or a medical college you will see meningitis it's very very rare that you see and diagnose a meningitis in a rural setting but you know we should not miss that single case even if you are not seen meningitis for say 5 or 10 years if that case comes you know we should be able to identify fortunately the meningitis all, all have come down from past years because we have seen in the previous lectures how the vaccines have tremendously improved the quality of uh, children lives of children and also hypertension is also one thing dr radhika is there she'll agree with that because hypertension is also one basic thing which a pediatrician should always check blood pressure in children uh in uh, this ap like screening which was mentioned headache screening Uh, that means hypertension uh, basically should always be looked in children at least who come with high risks or coming and getting admitted in the hospital with headache that is also very important and also sometimes catastrophic things like hemorrhage thrombosis strokes and all uh, may also be there as a cause for generalized so this talk will basically be on uh, recurrent headaches and of these migraine is the most common followed by tension type headaches cluster headaches are very rare and very rarely uh, some people just like trigeminal neuralgia uh, when a pediatrician see and refer patients a neurologist will have a different perspective on headaches regarding the chronic it's basically classified into two progressive or a non progressive progressive are one of the serious ones which we see like a tumor pseudo tumor cerebri uh, brain abscess vasculitis hydrocephalus etc non progressive are uh, there in the community which we will have to be on a lookout like tension headaches which are the most common one very rarely only we see conversion reactions or malingering and a very important thing regarding identification of depression and anxiety especially in children now we see lot of children as young as 9 years and all having symptoms of depression which are uh, psychiatry or a behavioral uh, friends uh, will vouch for that Uh, regarding the approach uh, we may get close uh, regarding the onset like uh, suddenly it comes in hemorrhage or even gradual in migraine or uh, with fever maybe a viral fever other symptoms recurrent headaches persistently uh, in the morning and waking up that becomes a feature of uh, raised tension a long duration headaches usually they are uh, primary headaches like migraine or the sides can be children you know very important adults you know migraine usually it's a uh, uh, unilateral but children it can be usually bilateral and also even swapping of the sides can also occur during episodes the nature of the headache uh, a pounding or a throbbing headache in migraine uh, with a tight feeling around the head uh, as intention or depression then also the relieving and the aggravating factors like a uh, morning the child is woken up that's a complaint with the children some children are very astute and they give you a typical history uh, whereas a migraine we all know after the episode the ch uh, children or uh, we adults uh, go to sleep and that uh, sleep will uh, relieve migraine and uh, uh, associated symptoms are also very important sometimes you know it may be a clue like weight gain in uh, steroids fever with meningitis etc Uh, examination uh, we should uh, look into because a very focused uh, very detailed history and an examination will uh, give you clue uh, very important to know the red flag signs so red flag signs are things which will help a pediatrician to identify whether this headache which we are dealing with is uh, going to be a problem like a progressive headache a recent onset of uh, worsening or development of seizures or a neurologic deficits early morning headache transient obscuration of vision persistent vomiting or peaking of headache or weight loss or systemic symptoms so this is a acronym uh, which is very easy for us to follow this has been taken from uh, an adult and then uh, applied in pediatrics and uh, this is a recent study which uh, identifies the 
clinical uh, red flag signs which has been postulated but of these they have identified only all these four that we all have been following this we all know in practice acute onset altered conscious state a focal motor abnormality and an ocular or a pupillary movement so we'll go to the primary headaches of which the common is migraine migraines uh, the pain is uh, usually is very moderate or uh, severe in intensity it's a pulsating it can uh, last as uh, small as 4 hours to even uh, 3 days and usually there may be an aura and uh, there will be nausea and vomiting then heightened sensitivity to sound light and the child uh, will prefer to be in a cool environment and the child uh, may uh, prefer to sleep off also and family history is very strong so much so that if there is no family history it's always better to look for a, uh, an alternative diagnosis what happens during migraine these are the stages and we know after at the resolution there will be vomiting and then the uh, migraine attack will go away and in between the ch people will be children will be better very important to look into the triggers because they will give you an uh, idea of uh, prevention even that uh, personalized plan of action to prevent triggers are, uh, will be there this is the classification of migraine which i am not going to uh, go migraine can be with aura without aura and episodic sim symptoms syndromes are very important in pediatrics because these are like infantile colic cyclical vomiting abdominal migraine these are some of the differential diagnosis which we consider for not only for headaches but for abdominal pains also so sometimes uh, these uh, may coexist also and uh, there may be comorbidities like epilepsy, ectopy and all. Very important that we identify epilepsy because sometimes the partial seizures can also behave like a migraine. In that case, you will uh, definitely require a period a neuro consultation. Two minutes. And uh, aura or visual phenomena can be positive or negative. Positive means uh, there may be flashes, lights, etc. Negative means there may be spot or mass. When tension types headaches, uh, they, although they are uh, rare in children, but nowadays we see. The most classic one is that, you know, they will be usually bilateral and a tight feeling and it will extend into the neck and the head and neck region. And sometimes there may be an evening worsening also. The disability will be very less and the children will be able to carry on their activities. They usually don't miss their school days. Cluster headaches are also there, but it's uh, rare in children. The key issues in investigations, uh, because... Uh, usually the prevalence of secondary causes are very rare so uh, sometimes you investigate and you will see some incidental findings and then you know we'll be uh, worried whether you know to follow that or not so like incidental nomas we say and non-specific uh, red flag signs in children and also very important uh, it's not very easy to get uh, scans done for child especially mri you cannot uh, sedate see the, sometimes the problem of sedating will be even worse in this area of litigation and all and also the economics, the radiation, all these things are important, uh, accessibility, all these things are important. Then sometimes you know you may have to investigate for secondary causes, but uh, regarding uh, investigations, if you suspect a bleed, calcification, exol and all as EC, it's better to do a CT. Whereas children, we know the uh, uh, radiation and all, so if you suspect a posterior fossa tumor, cranial nerve, hypothalamus, pituitary, CP angle, etc., go for an MRI. So whatever it is, neuroimaging, definite recent change in onset of headache, change in type of headache, neurologic dysfunction or any abnormal neurologic examination, you may, you will have to go for a neuroimaging and sometimes you know you may get findings like that. So treatment strategy is basically acute treatment, lifestyle modification, complementary treatments and prevention. So what do the children and the parents do? So very important that pediatricians uh, may ha will have to establish the diagnosis if needed you have to if typical and all you should go for a consultation with a neurologist and look for possible somatic and psychiatric comorbidities ask for trigger assess the degree of disability educate the child and family and use a headache diary that is very important because even uh, when they come for follow-up you know it will be easy for us to identify and they have to have a sound rhythm of life and uh, they have to cope with the uh, factors Usual drugs are NSAIDs and the triptans, anti nausea medications. The drugs you use, I think uh, you are all very familiar with the drugs. Analgesics are the first step. It can be paracetamol, it can be ibuprofen, even methanamic acid, naproxen, all these things can be used. One personal favorite is for me is uh, naproxen with Romstar, Romperidone in combination. That's very useful in an acute episode. Nowadays, triptans have come and uh, oral uh, uh, and uh, intranasal. Uh, sprays are available but uh, it, 
can be used only in a uh, bigger child. And like salmi so drip jar, uh, one uh, one spray into the nostril, uh, deep no uh, one episode can avoid the attack. So this is a acronym like a smart plan for life. That is, uh, these are the things which we should uh, highlight regarding sleep, sufficient sleep, no, not too much and not too too little. Meals also regular sufficient meals. Activity should be regular with uh, regular exercise, relaxation techniques. In that uh, age, our traditional yoga will be of uh, great help and trigger avoidance. Preventive therapies, I think we should go for preventive therapies if it is distressing. Not much of a guidelines, but uh, some way I have read, at least if there are four days of disability per month, it's better to go for a preventive therapy. Because preventive therapy will take around uh, two to three months for the active. Meanwhile, maintain the headache uh, diary and uh, you go for the lifestyle modifications. The drugs which we use commonly are propranolol uh, and, and uh, fluoroacin. If you need sleep, uh, fluoroacin will be a better one. Otherwise, uh, propranolol is the best one. And uh, other drugs like amitriptyline and cyproheptadine are also used. And uh, very rarely only anti-epileptic drugs uh, like valparin and uh, topiramate are used. Then uh, complementary therapy is also helpful regarding the nutraceuticals because they are the in things uh, nowadays and like magnesium, riboflavin, coenzyme Q and some herbs and all but these things require uh, more uh, studies and all. Very important regarding self-regulation. That is the one which we have to teach the children because that will go a long uh, way in helping them in their life also. And biofeedback tools are available uh, for uh, this body-mind connection and all. And cognitive behavior therapies, they all require uh, whatever is possible, we should be able to do for them. And uh, very rarely, psychological interventions will also help. So as a take home, uh, we know that headache is not a very common complaint, but uh, once it is there, we have to treat them ideally. Otherwise, you know, it will produce a great burden for the child and also for the family. And optimal treatment is very important. You should always keep in mind the secondary causes and uh, the red flag signs will actually help the pediatrician to look for uh, whether we are dealing with any serious form and uh, reassurance and long term follow up are very important especially we are ch dealing with children thank you